Hey guys, this is JG talking about Raid Shadow Legends today. I've started a new series here today that I'm calling Free Raid Ideas. I don't know about you, but I've found some of the new content that has showed up in Raid lately, like the Talarian Summer Trials or the Path of Light, to be pretty unengaging. It's basically the same old thing, the same old grind that we have before with just new and different rewards, new reasons to grind, but not really any, any new way to engage with content. Uh, I think Raid can do better than this, and so I wanted to start a series with some ideas using some principles of game design and really thinking through the strengths and the weaknesses of Raid and how to create content that would be really engaging for the player base. So to start with, let's talk about what is the problem with Raid. I could do a whole video on this later, and maybe I will, but I'll try to cover it real briefly right here. Fundamentally, Raid is about team building. The fun thing about the game is building a team that can conquer a certain piece of content. The boring thing about Raid is that after you've built that team, you grind that same content on auto with that same team 200 times in a row. And that is not fun. Uh, then the problem for Plarium is that developing new content, new bosses that players can conquer and build teams for, is slow. It takes a lot of work from their design team and their programmers to create new content. You know, we're seeing teasers right now for the Iron Twins, which have been teased for a long time. I'm sure this took them a long time to develop. But fundamentally, players are going to conquer the new content faster than Plarium can create it. So this means Plarium sort of on this content treadmill, where they need to be producing content, but they can't produce it as fast as players get bored of it. What they really need is a system where players are building more teams, but using those teams less. Um, so that means they need to be able to generate new content at scale. And in particular, they need to be able to generate temporary content. You want content where you build a team for it, run it for a little while, and then you throw it away and new content comes in. So that you're constantly creating teams and not just constantly grinding with the same teams that you've already built, redoing the same content over and over. So here I have one proposal for a way that they could do that. I call it tower tournaments. What you do is every month you run a new tournament, it's sort of like a miniature Doom Tower. It's 10 floors long. Each floor costs you 10 energy to run. And what the floor consists of is really any sort of existing content we have in the game. It could be like a Doom Tower floor, just three waves uh, of champions. It can be a boss, uh, whether a Doom Tower boss. It could be Fire Knight, any existing content. For the waves inside the floor, you can reconfigure those each month. So... You might be used to facing Fire Knight with a certain set of champions in front of them, and you can reconfigure that to something else. You can do things like they do in Doom Tower, where they put in some of the stronger champions and try to put them together in teams that make them pretty tricky. You could make team compositions that are themed, maybe seasonal, like you know, in December, run Santa and Jungle Hunter and some of those together. You can run... Compositions that are just a little bit silly. Maybe, um, you know, I remember my clan got a big kick out of a screenshot of someone whose arena defense was for Vogoth. Um, so you can run things that are that are tricky, maybe a little hard to kill, or that might, might take some interesting mechanics for you to take down. And then across that entire Doom Tower, the miniature tower, you track how many turns it takes someone to complete it. Their, their best run for each floor, uh, add those up and run this... Uh, ranking just like the existing Doom Tower leaderboard. And then for rewards at the end, you give people prizes based on where they fall in the overall leaderboard. Everyone that makes it into maybe the top 50% of the leaderboard gets kind of a medium or low level prize. If you make it to the top 20%, you get a, a pretty good prize. And the top 10% or higher, you get a really fat prize. So this is something that creates an incentive for people to optimize their teams and really try to build a fast, well-tuned team for each one of these floors so they can get the big prize that shows up at the end. Here's why I think this content would be fun. First of all, why is it good for players? This is PvP content, but it looks like PvE content. And so the interesting thing there is that the fun part about PvP is that it's not just about clearing the content, it's about doing better than the other players do. That tends to, in a lot of game, be more challenging, result in people engaging for a longer period of time. Uh, and generally can make the game more fun. Uh, number two, this isn't a grind. At no point in here would you really have an incentive to run the same thing, same team through the same floor twice. Instead, what you're going to do is constantly rebuild the team, try to tune it, try to figure out how 
need to beat it just a few turns faster than before, how to clear the wave quickly, and uh, get a better score. Uh, since there's no need to grind this content, there's basically no direct reward for beating these floors. There's no grind, uh, but it creates an incentive to actually play the content. You, you might actually turn off auto, something which I never do in Raid today. You know, turn off auto and try to really tune your skills coming up at just the right time and, and using them at the point where it maximizes your score for that particular floor. The other thing that's great about this is it's a skill-based contest. It's not a test of resources spent. The tournaments that we have today, you know, Dragon Tournament or things like that, you know, a, a huge number of players are capable of getting the top milestone reward in these just by spending a bunch of energy. You know, a lot of people can clear Dragon 16, 20, or 25 uh, and just run that over and over. And so topping the leaderboard there doesn't really show that you're a better player than anyone else. It just shows that you spent more energy than anyone else. Whereas a system like this is actually a test of skill, and you know, being at the top tier there is something that feels good, it shows your mastery as a player, and is something that's kind of worth competing for. Now, of course, we don't just want a system that's good for players. It needs to be good for Plarium, too. Ultimately, you know, if we like the game, we want the game to be successful, then we need things that are good for Plarium and sustainable for Plarium. So the thing that's great for them here is there's no new content here. Um, you don't have to design new bosses, you, you reuse all the existing champions, backgrounds, and bosses that you have. You just reconfigure them in new ways. It becomes really trivial for Plarium to roll out a new one of these every month. It's just a little bit of config in the system. All you need to do is decide who's going to be in the waves or who the bosses are going to be this month, and you can launch another one. So it becomes something that's very low effort and very low cost for, for Plarium to continue designing effectively new content every month. You don't need to care that much about balancing this content. You know, my uh, goal would be that you target this difficulty-wise to be somewhere like the middle of normal Doom Tower, something that's approachable to a lot of players, so a lot of players can complete the content, but um, difficult enough that you can really distinguish between the people that are clearing it very fast and doing really well versus the people that are just barely making it through. But because fundamentally this is PvP, you know all the rewards are based on doing better than other players, not just clearing the content, then the balance doesn't matter. If you make it too hard one month or too easy one month, that means that the average score might be higher or lower, but there's still a competition among players to take that top spot. Um, also, you know, this creates community engagement. It encourages content creation and content consumption in that you know, every month, if there's a particularly tricky floor that people are debating about, you'll have your content creators out there saying, hey, here's here's the way to handle floor seven. Uh, you know, I did floor seven in 15 turns, here's how. And people that are really wanting to compete here are going to be watching a lot of those videos, uh, engaging with the content, really trying to figure out how they can do their best. So it helps um, one of Red's strengths, which is the community, you know, have more content to talk about than just reviewing new champions all the time. Um, now let's talk about the rewards. Uh, you know, one of the things that's key to Raid is the content that is popular in Raid is based on the things that are rewarding for players. So it's key that this be rewarding. It might be a fun game mode to play just on its own, but if the rewards are terrible, players are not going to be crazy about it. You know, the reason that Clan Boss is so popular is not because people love watching their same team hit Clan Boss for 45 minutes every day. It's because the rewards are great and much better than you get anywhere else. So same here. Um, you need there to be good rewards here that players are willing to chase, so they're willing to spend their time trying to do better than other players here. Um, I'm proposing that this tournament runs for a whole month, and so if there's only a monthly reward, the, the reward at the end should be big. You know, a lot of the existing tournaments, they last three to five days. Um, you know, the arena rewards come up every seven days, clan boss rewards come up every day, hydra rewards come up weekly, so you really need the size of the reward to be tuned based on how frequently you can get it. And so, you know, if it takes a whole month to get the prize, it should be a big fat prize at the end that's worth spending resources on all month. Um, ultimately, I don't think you need to invent new items, new, you know, new sets to give away or new currencies or anything like that to make it interesting. You can just use the existing things that people want to chase in the game right now, um, you put them in the in the reward slot and people are willing to play it. Obviously, you could invent a new exclusive set or something like that to drop on this content, but I don't think it's key to make the content fun. Here's my proposal for the prizes that you could give out for this. First of all, everyone that competes, that finishes all 10 floors, give them an Ancient Shard as soon as they finish. 
If it's 10 energy per floor, that's 100 energy for one Ancient Shard. It's a pretty good return. A lot of people are likely to at least clear the content and put some initial scores up on the leaderboard. Um, then the first couple of tiers of rewards, you know, 75th percentile, 50th percentile, these are pretty easy rewards to get. These are people that are not taking this all that seriously. And so you really need kind of a participation prize. You know, at 75th percentile, I'm proposing something like a three-day XP banner or 100 gems, a few three-star chickens. Again, since it's a monthly prize, you want it to be not tiny, but these are people that didn't put in a ton of effort here. They didn't put in a whole lot more than the 100 energy just to run through it once. Um, top 50%, a little bit better than that, maybe a 500 energy block into their inbox or a million silver or something like that. 40%, you're starting to see people that are trying at least a, a fair amount. They're, they're not really pushing all month long, but these are people uh, you know, giving it their best, doing a few runs and deciding that's good enough. So something like an epic book or some five-star chickens are enough of a prize that you know it, a one epic book is not going to be game-changing for anyone. But that's a, a nice prize to get at the end of the month for something that you put a little bit of effort into. Now, the higher tier of rewards are the more competitive tier. You know, when you're talking 30% plus, these are people that, that took this fairly seriously. They tried to tried to really make a, a nice score and are chasing some of these prizes. So again, for something that runs one month long, they can be pretty big prizes and you start to get some pretty interesting things in here. I'm saying at 30%, maybe something like 10 Ancient Shards. We rarely see um, a package that large coming out in any reward, but I think for a monthly tournament, that's, that's worth it. You know, Ancient Shards aren't worth all that much, but 10 Ancient Shards is a, a pretty nice prize for ending up in the top third of all the players in this. You could also do something like give out speed glyphs. Those are definitely the glyphs that are in the most demand for a lot of people. Um, or a legendary book. That's, of course, one of the top currencies in the game. That's something that, that people are interested in chasing. Um, top 20%, you're starting to get into pretty serious players here. So give out you know, a sacred shard, maybe a big pile of energy. I'm saying 2,500 energy here. If we break that up into five sets of 500 that land in your inbox. So it's something you can claim later, maybe for the next champion fusion or a time where you really want to push in a clan versus clan tournament or something like that. Top 10%, I think it's not unreasonable to include a feast. Uh, feasts don't show up a whole lot as rewards, or they're, they're very deep in event rewards sometimes. But for a monthly reward, a feast, being able to six-star someone you know, once a month from putting a, a significant amount of energy into a tournament like this seems like a reasonable prize. Or a stack, maybe five epic books, uh, three void shards, something like that. Again, we don't generally see that much at once, but it's not an unreasonable reward. You know, if you're um, if you're hitting Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss daily, you're getting something like eight, you know, epic and legendary books and sacred shards each month. Um, so these are not you know completely out of the realm of that, but it's a, a prize that's worth chasing. It definitely boosts your account some. At five percent, you know, five sacred shards, five legendary books. That is a a nice prize. Again, it's not game breaking. It's not. Uh, it's not more than what you get over that same period for doing clan boss, but it's still a reward that is pretty nice to have land in your account. And then my proposal for the very top tier, you know, the top two percent, maybe you know, one percent, two percent, three percent, something like that, um, have a cutoff that gives out exclusive champion skins or exclusive avatars. You know, these are things that don't actually help you clear content at all. They don't make your account any stronger in an, an objective sense. So the reward here is basically bragging rights. So if you're an in-game player, you know you don't necessarily need a lot of these resources more, um, but this becomes something uh, interesting for you to chase just to, to show your clan or to show off in your arena defense or something like that, that you have something that not everyone else has. Um, so you know, even though it, it's not objectively valuable, it's a thing that people would be excited to have and would really compete for those very top spots on the leaderboard to be able to get that. That's it for the basic summary of what I think this feature could be. Um, however, if you know, it caught on, I think there's also some ways that you could expand it over time, uh, adjust it a little bit, and make it even more interesting and even more engaging. One would be if you're seeing the same sort of strategies show up uh, all the time, like a, a Seer team with Kaimar you know, to clear waves super fast, um, you could start trying to nerf some of those strategies uh, or promote different ones. So things like 
Um, yeah, if you use an, uh, an enemy max HP or a reset cooldown skill, you take a 10 turn penalty for doing that. Uh, or, you know, if you really want to cut that strategy out, you know, a 100 turn penalty, no one would ever use it. You know, a 10 turn penalty is about at the range where people might think about it. I mean, say, like, it might still be worth it to bring Seer, but I have to think about it. Uh, and that's a level that creates a little bit of strategic depth to it. Um, you can also give t turn bonuses for doing certain, uh, making cer certain accomplishments, like leaving a slot empty on your team for a floor, um, completing a floor with no legendaries, or some things like that. Um, so again, promoting different different sorts of strategies, uh, getting people building different kinds of teams instead of just using the same, you know, good wave clearer team, um, you know, every month after month. You can also make some adjustments to the way that the waves themselves are put together. For example, the campaign bosses today are champions that you can get, you know, Bad Alcazar and things like that, uh, but you just fight them in giant form with a couple of minions. Um, if that's not too hard to do, make giant forms of other champions, you know, make a giant Vogoth as one of your bosses in one of these floors, give him a couple of minions, uh, make him a little extra strong, and, and see how that runs as a challenge floor. Um, you can also just make hard, harder versions or different versions of bosses that are already exist. So maybe your potion keep bosses, if they only go up to level 15, they don't get all that hard. Um, you know, pump up one to a, a higher level, or you can even rotate the affinity on it. So you're fighting the magic keep boss, but it's in spirit affinity. And so the, you know, maybe the, the force types that you build in a typical magic keep team stop being as interesting there. So it makes you bring a little different strategy to that particular boss. Um, you could take bosses that exist today, but then mix up some of the passive skills from other bosses. So, for example, take Dragon, but give him that Frost Spider skill that makes him resurrect if he's not killed with HP burn on him, um, so that you have to bring an additional element of strategy to your fight there. Um, or finally, you could even build some special dungeons that have two bosses in succession in them. You know, maybe you have to fight Scarab, and then after that, fight Fire Knight which really puts a, some depth into your team building there of, you know, how do you trade off between bringing champions that are good at fighting one of those and champions that are good at fighting the other and really optimize for uh, the fastest kill across both bosses at the same time. Um, so there's a, little, a lot of ideas here where you could create a lot of strategic depth here and create content that has players trying things out, building new teams, you know, again, building new teams without grinding those teams. So, you're spending more time actually playing the game, doing the parts that are fun about the game, not the things that are boring about the game. That's it for today. If you like this idea, please drop a like on this video. I'm going to produce several of these and I would love to see which ideas I have the most traction with people and hopefully be able to get the attention of Plarium with this. That's it for today. So long.